welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with the Rise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast. Our guest today is Hasten Chan. And we're going to be talking about the new capital gains tax that was implemented on June 25th, 2024, and how this is going to affect our real estate investments. How's it going, Hasten? Hey, John, how are you? Pretty Thanks good. Uh, why don't you just share with us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Hasten, and I'm uh, you know uh, one of the accountants with Transfer Consulting. Uh, we're a small firm. Uh, we most of the time we serve a small to medium sized business owner. Uh, we got lots of professionals, including yourself, and we got lots of dentists, surgeons. Uh, yeah, mostly professional firm. Uh, but we have other you know industry uh, as well that we serve. So uh, yeah, every day is busy helping people to save on taxes. You know, doing a lot of bookkeeping, dealing with the CRA. Especially nowadays, it's not easy to deal with the government because after COVID. The government needs a lot of money, so they would try their best to take money from your pocket, right? So, uh, yeah, so that keeps us busy. Awesome. Yeah, I have lots of questions to ask about the new capital gains tax, and I can see how the conversation can get a little bit too in-depth, maybe too serious. So before we get into that, I want to just start off with some lighter questions to get to know you about more to hopefully have a more enjoyable conversation so you're more relaxed so if you're okay with that uh i will just fire off these really quick questions and you just answer whatever comes to your mind okay sure let's do it let's make okay. taxation Jason, fun yeah favorite bubble tea oh uh, you mean the, the location or just just bubble tea? Uh, the drink oh i i i am a cloud I, I like anything classic, uh, you know, just with pearls and then just new tea, you know, 30% sugar, no ice, same thing every time. So, Amazing. That's, yeah. that's me too. Yeah. Mac or PC? Um, uh, I use uh, PC at work. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. Do you go for looks or brains? Uh, I would like, I like, I'll, I'll say both. Can oh, I choose both? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want everything. I want everything, yeah. <laughs> rich and famous or rich and unknown? A rich and unknown. Glass half empty or glass half full? Glass half full. Fiction or non-fiction? Um, non-fiction. Rain or snow? Oh. This one is tough because you know when the snow when the snow kind of melts, it's, it's still wet, so it just rain. Right? Oh, then Vancouver is perfect. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. And then these last two questions are: Would you rather? Okay. So, would you rather have the ability to see ten minutes into the future, or a hundred and fifty years into the future? Uh, I would say ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. And last one, would you rather swim in a pool uh, full of Nutella or a pool full of maple syrup? Uh, Nutella. Nutella? Yeah. Yeah, Nutella. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope that was fun. But let's dive deeper into the uh, capital gain tax. Uh, it's rattled the, the market and it's been the talk um, ever since it was implemented. But there are some people who may not know what it is. So, could you just provide a brief overview of the new capital gains tax that was implemented? Yeah, so so the new uh, proposed budget uh, from the federal government says that the uh, capital gain tax uh, will be increased from 50% inclusion rate to 66.67%. And if you look at history, there are actually uh, you know, a couple of years that actually it was quite high. Um, but before we dig into the percentage of the tax, you know, the income inclusion, we should talk about the definition of capital gain. So a lot of people thought that capital gains is just real estate. Uh, that's, that's not true. So capital gain means that if you own a house or like an investment property, if you sell it, you know, if you own it for a number of years, you rent it out, usually it's going to be capital gain. 
Uh, however, don't forget that if you buy, you know, you mentioned we mentioned about a PC or or, or Mac, right? Uh, so let's say you're an Apple fan, you you buy you know Apple stock because you're iPhone user, you you know Mac user. Um, if your portfolio is you know big enough, when you sell the stock portfolio, that could also trigger this uh, capital gain tax. And then and there's also something that we always forget is that you know. Uh, People work in different sector, right? So some people work with the government, some people work in the charity, uh, you know, world, and then people like you and I, uh, we work in private sector, and then a lot of uh, my clients and perhaps your clients, uh, they are, you know, medical professionals, for for example, uh, those dentists and surgeons and doctor, right? They they don't have a pension; they work for themselves. So when they sell their practice. Perhaps a part of the capital gain is going to be subject to this higher, you know, uh, income tax, which is sixty six point six seven percent. So there's an exemption uh, for individual. There's going to be half million uh, of capital gain, and more than that, you have to pay sixty seven percent of the income inclusion rate. Uh, but there's no exemption for uh, corporation and trusts. So that's just just general overview for the capital gain tax. Mm-hmm. So what has been the feedback from your clients? Uh, of course, the government wants to sell it as if, oh, it's not going to affect that many Canadians. But is this true or is it actually affecting more than what they're saying? Yeah, clients are like, uh, some of them, they've been doing uh, tax planning already when they heard about the news. And some of them are like freak out and they were like yelling, what happened, right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the top top 1% or top 0.1% rich people, right? As the government mentioned. So, um, you know, actually, to be honest, a lot of the middle class uh, individuals, they do have a principal resident. Mm-hmm. Usually it's tax free. Right. Uh, if it's not subject to these anti-flipping uh, rules, uh, that's another topic, you know. Uh, so your principal resident is tax free when you sell it. You know when you uh, sell it when you want to uh, downgrade, upgrade when you want to give it to your kids. Usually it's tax free, but a lot of people they have investment investment property. Um, you know especially for people who is in business because again like people in business they don't have a pension. That's the pension funds, right? Uh, but for people who work with a big corporation and with the government. Uh, sure, they have pension, but a lot of uh, Canadians, they would like to uh, keep the money or the investment dollar within real estate, right? Uh, some with a, you know investment portfolio with a lot of stocks and mutual funds. Uh, yeah, so this is a big thing because it means that people have to work harder. Uh, maybe instead of retiring at 62, they have to you know extend a couple of years to 65, perhaps 67. Perhaps you're always working, right? Part time. Right, so that's that's the feedback from the people. Has this change been kind of on the horizon for a while? Is just that no one, no government really wanted to implement it, or it was this just uh, came up recently and the government just figured, oh, why not, and then implement it? The our industry has been talking about this uh, for a period of time for a while. Uh, you know, whether the government spend our tax money wisely or is another topic, right? But it sounds like they're, they're exhausted with, you know, they just need more new ideas to, to you know, to collect more tax money. Uh, part of the reason is because, you know, the COVID, you know, everybody got, you know, $2,000 of CRB and then business got a lot of money as well. So, you know, the government is like printing a lot of money, right? So now is the time to you know collect all this tax dollars to balance their budget. So that's one of the big reasons as well. Mm-hmm. So with this new change, would this change the way Canadians invest? Like, would it influence their decision to buy more real estate or stocks? There's no more Canadian. Everybody's leaving, ah. leaving the country. So right. if you look at- where where are they going though? Like, if they're leaving, like. Because the state, they also have similar uh, taxes, like they'll have capital gains and things like that. So where where would these people be going? Yeah, sure. Like if, if people stay in Canada, right, especially in a city like Vancouver or Toronto, yeah. uh, with such a high you know living cost, they're moving to, you know, uh, 
Edmonton or Calgary, you know, other provinces within Canada. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, in the States, uh, it's very similar to us. They, some of the taxes is even higher, right? They have to pay for, you know, Medicare and all the kind of, you know, all the kind of stuff. Um, but the thing is that when you run a business in the States, it's easier to scale, scale it up, right? It's more scalable because of the population. Uh, they have you know more than two hundred million population. We only get like you know forty million, right? Mm -hmm. So we are still you know we, we still need to work hard to you know <laughs> increase the number of like, population. So when you run a business, you can scale it up. And some people they just move to Asia. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Uh, you know uh, with the economy down downturn uh, all around the world, uh, it's not just Canada. But if you look at other reports and the stats. Uh, Within all these, uh, I think it's the G eight, you know, um, industrial um, country, mm -hmm. uh, Canada. We have the lowest income, like we make the least amount of money, but our living cost is the, is the highest, mm -hmm. right? Compared to France, Germany, England, U.S., you know, uh, and and Canada, right? So I mean, like people would think about creative ways to to you know to think about like tax planning now. Uh, you know, it's always you know going to be like that. Uh, they just don't work with us, right? Individuals and corporations, they work with people like us and also tax lawyer, right? And also tax specialists. You know, they'll think about all kinds of ways to, you know, to defer the tax they have to pay. So, uh, so a little bit more professional fee uh, for them, but a lot of them, they still, you know, chase after the tax lawyer. Tax lawyer that we work with, they're super busy. Mm -hmm. Like without a referral, uh, they're probably not going to see you. So they like super busy to keep up with all these changes, uh, helping different clients to do tax planning. Actually, one question to that is, so what would be the difference between you as a CPA accountant versus a tax lawyer? Uh, don't you guys do very similar things or what, 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 um, what, why would a client need to talk to a tax lawyer versus accountant? Yeah. So, so that's a good question, John. So, uh, how we see ourselves is that uh, as a shadow professional accountant, we are more like a, a general practitioner, right? So we, we're kind of like a family doctor, right? We kind of know a bit of everything. And usually we work with the business owner uh, closely, right? And when you run a business, you probably know there are a lot of obligations and duties you have to fulfill as business owner. Uh, you have to, you know, you have, if you put people on payroll, you have to follow the compliance, you have to do the bookkeeping and all this financial reporting, uh, sending the tax return to the CRA. When you incorporate your business, you will have to file your um, corporation income tax return and also, you know, your personal income tax return as well. Uh, you might have to collect GST or PST. So all this kind of compliance, uh, including, uh, you know, portion of tax planning and advisory that we do. This is what we do every day. Um, we do not have legal training, so we're not supposed to uh, do anything. You know, we cannot draft a contract, right? We cannot, you know, represent you in court, right? We might be one of the witnesses, um, but we cannot, you know, fight for you, right? But versus what tax lawyer does is that they have a legal, you know, background, um, they specialize in taxation, right? You know, all this taxation, you know, all this income tax act or excise tax act, they are super complicated, right? And the tax lawyer, they went through the training, they know how to interpret the tax rule. And then usually they are at the uh, higher level of uh, planning, uh, especially setting up of different kind of trusts, uh, holding company uh, to own different assets. Uh, by working with them or with our experience, we kind of know a bit of everything. We kind of know the concept and how things work. But when it comes to uh, drafting certain contract, promissory note, uh, doing some sort of restructuring, uh, estate freeze, you know, all this kind of stuff, usually a tax lawyer will prepare. Mm -hmm. And some really, really advanced, you know, ambitious uh, tax planning that they will use the trust account and they kind of transfer all the taxpayer money to a country with no tax treaty with Canada, uh, so that there's no way the Canadian government can, you know, can can get them, right? So, you know, this kind of stuff is what you see in a movie, right? So it happens. But you know what's uh quite frustrating? Like when I heard about this new tax change, what's really frustrating is that there's no grandfather rule. So they implemented this new rule 
and it's not like if you purchase something after this date, then it would be subject to the new tax. It's even for people who have bought something 10, 20, 30 years ago and where the taxes were different. And if they sold after that date, then they actually have to pay the, the new taxes. So I'm just like thinking, I'm like, you know, there's not really not much planning that can be done, but, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. So what is it that people can do or be more mindful of, or what advice would you give to Canadian taxpayers? Yeah, you mentioned about grandfather rule. Um, <clears throat> sounds like it's quite unfair to, you know, hardworking Canadians that uh, we just have to pay this tax, you know, no, no matter what we do. Uh, but the thing is that when it comes to real estate, it takes a long time for the the value, the fair market value of the real property to to double. So let's say you invest something today for, you know, half a million dollars, right? So let's say condo, right? And with inflation, with the high cost of living in, in, in Canada, uh, the labor costs, material costs, and the government permits and everything, everything keeps going up, right? From half a million dollar to, you know, $1.5 million, it's going to take like 30 years, right? It's going to take time. It's not going to be happen tomorrow. So perhaps from the, from the point of view of the government, we, we want the money now. We don't want to wait until like 30 years later, right? They might not be in power anymore. Right. So perhaps, you know, not even in, until end of next year. Right. So I think I think what we can do, the solution would be, you know, be mindful of everything. Right. When you um, when and, and pick an accountant that, that you work with, that you trust, uh, you know, he or she would be the CFO of your family or, or of your company. Right. Stay on top of everything. Uh, even for people like us staying on top of all these tax changes every year with new budget, you know, it is, is, is challenging, right? Because they have implemented so many different types of taxes, right? Today, we just picked this topic, capital gain uh, related to real estate. But when it comes to real estate related, the government says that, wow, you know, there's a lot of money in real estate, right? Not just capital gain, but also uh, the anti-flipping uh, rule. Uh, you know, the home flipping taxes in, in the B, within the BC government and also the federal government has this kind of rule, uh, something to do with the um, uh, principal resident. There are three types of empty home taxes, right? There's the uh, Vancouver, the BC tax regulation, and the, the UHT. Uh, and then there's... It's so this, difficult just to keep I up. I know. <laughs> yeah, if you... To fail, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so I, I think uh, the... The cost of you know professional fee, including you know hiring a tax specialist for you know five ten hours, will go up. But at the end of the day, uh, there's going to be tax saving, right? If you're mindful, uh, uh, you know to do some planning, because most of the business in BC, uh, ninety, I'll say ninety eight to ninety nine percent are small and medium sized business owner, right? And we are busy running the operation of the business, like operating the business. Uh, but don't forget. Uh, a business, a healthy business is like a, a expensive camera to be placed on a tripod, right? So when you look at the tripod, there are three legs, right? So the first leg is sales and marketing, and the second leg is operation, right? Most business owners, they focus on, you know, sales and marketing. You keep telling people what you're good at, right? You keep finding clients, marketing, sales, sales, right? And then second will be operation, right? Are you really good? You know, are we really good at what you're doing, right? But the third leg is a lot of the time business owner ignore or even you know too busy right is you know accounting taxes uh, legal human resource and administrative tasks and even workflow a lot of this kind of stuff uh people tend to ignore and now is the time to you know to review your business and, and your asset perhaps your portfolio uh, from top to bottom and come up with some you know proactive plan you know or else you'd be working every day it's very hard spend all the time accumulate some asset and pay the taxes to the government yeah. right and you don't want that right so in terms of, just further to the tax planning then would it be safe to say if i were to buy my next asset try to buy it under personal name then instead of my corporate or holding company without uh, way to go it's not it's not like a one size fit all kind of solution, right? So it really depends. So uh, in terms of 
owning real estate, like investing property under your individual name. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, all the uh, you know the rental income that you collect is going to be taxable within that can cal calendar year, right? And when you sell your property, it's going to be capital gain tax, you know, under your own name, right? Uh, you uh, or most Canadians, they will have, you know, income personally. You they they probably take a T four T five like a salary dividend from you know the corporations in with someone who work for you know an organization. They will have T four, right? They will probably they be making you know a hundred thousand, fifty thousand a year already. So everything get adds up, you know, under the personal income tax, you know, uh, tax bracket, right? But versus if you put the investment property inside your holding company, yes, you pay the higher tax rate. Uh, you know, the investment, uh, you know, the tax rate is 50, you know, it's more than 50%, like half. Um, but what you're getting, you'll be getting a CDA, like a capital dividend account, which is a tax-free account that you can withdraw dividends to yourself, you know, on an annual basis, you can do it slowly. So there is some sort of tax planning involved, and it also really depends on, you know, what is the expected capital gain, right? So that's why it's not like when a policy A comes out, oh, we're going to do B, right? So it's not like a one size fit all. It really depends on the individual uh, circumstance. Got it. And now I don't think anyone wants this, but I kind of feel like just given Canada's track record, there may be further changes to capital gains taxation or any types of like taxes. So since you are in the industry and you also mentioned that this has actually been part of the talks, but I just haven't implemented it until now. What are other talks that you've heard in the industry of different taxation rules that may be coming in the horizon? Uh, the capital gain taxes, like the 67% is something huge. Uh, some of the things that we heard is that now the uh, the two level of government has implemented the anti flipping taxes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to principal resident, the house that we're living in, right? Because this is very lucrative, right? Uh, it's tax free. Now they got two groups, right? They got the uh, federal, they got anti flipping rule, and then the also the BC government. So two level of government already says that, hey, 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 if you buy your houses with your family, you live in it within six months, you renovate, you sell it, it's not a principal resident, right? You have to live inside for one to two years. It depends on which you know tax law that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, we heard that the government the government might take away the principal resident exemption, right? Well, because when people that yeah, that yeah, that would be a big one, right? Yeah. Especially a lot of hardworking Canadians, they just um they usually when they get married, right? You generally speaking, they got a condo, right? Uh when you know, after maybe five years, they got a raise, you know, they make more money or they start a business, uh things are more stable, and then they get a townhouse, right? But when they get a townhouse, they do have a budget because the condo appreciate the price. Mm -hmm. And then if they have townhouse, they decide they have, you know, two dogs, one cat, or three kids, right? Or <laughs> So it really depends. So the family is growing. So, hey, I want to detach, right? I want a backyard. I want a front yard, right? So I want the kids will be playing in, in, in the backyard, right? So that they buy and detach. So that's how they upgrade their property. And this, this cycle is always tax-free. But now if the government is taking away the, uh, the principal resident exemption, that's a big thing. And hopefully that they don't. But there's going to be regulation now by saying that, hey, you know, you have to pay a portion of the capital gain taxes if you live in your houses less than one or two years, right? So it depends. Okay. So hopefully they won't they won't do that because a lot of Canadians they put all of the coins into the <laughs> into the house, right? <laughs> um yeah, I I just want to wrap up all this interview. It's been really good. I've asked a lot of questions. I'm wondering if there's anything that I've missed that you want to share with everyone about this new capital gains tax. Uh, so a lot of people having this uh miss you know uh interpretation in in terms of the tax rate. Uh, they thought that if you if the cost of your property is half a million dollar, five hundred thousand, okay, and if the house appreciates to a million dollar, right? 
So you go one million dollar minus half a million dollars. So you're making half a million dollar, five hundred thousand. This is your capital gain. Wow. A lot of people thought that, oh no, it's a lot of money, right? I'll be using half a million dollar, right? Times fifty percent or sixty six point six seven percent, and that's my that that is my tax payable. That's not true. That is the income inclusion rate. Right. And a lot of people, oh, if I make a hundred bucks, I'm going to be keeping thirty bucks. You know, that's crazy. You know, I pack everything and leave the country tomorrow. So don't do that. Don't leave. We love you being here. Um, so, so this is the the income inclusion rate. So it depends on which tax bracket you'll be in, right? But with you know approximately quarter million uh, income, uh, you're subject to you know forty five to fifty four percent of uh, taxes, right? But the lowest bracket is also you know twenty percent, you know twenty five and thirty. So uh, work out the numbers, right? You know, call your accountant, you know, make an appointment, do some planning, right? Don't get um, super frustrated and freak out by the numbers, right? So there's always going to be stuff that uh, we can do uh, legally, right? Got it. No, this is great. It's been very informative. Thank you for sharing, Hasten. And for those who are listening to this and they want to get in contact with you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, there are a few of us. Uh, we, we go through partners uh, focusing on different things. Uh, you can, you guys can send us an email uh, through info at transpect.ca and then we can schedule an appointment for meetings and a discovery call. So thank you. Thank you, John, for having us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Take care, Hasten. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.